These are numbers that uh, take time to gather. Some of them are through research, others are we have different sources of this information. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you get numbers from here and there, of course, you have to, to generate the story to mm -hmm. one is the numbers verify, but also you don't just throw numbers there. So what we are here is to tell an economic story, what is happening in our economy. Mm -hmm. And we use the numbers to, to as facts mm -hmm. and to demonstrate the, the facts and the uh, and the good thing is, of course, uh, we, we're building strong partners in this, and so we we are happy with the, our data sources, and uh, so we and happy with the audience. Mm -hmm. the, the good thing, of course, is getting the right audience, right. and uh, happy with the media that you help us to to take this even beyond the the, the few people we have in the room. Right, Governor. If the Rwandan economy was actually a patient and you were a doctor. You seem to have given it a clean bill of health. That is the Rwandan economy because it has actually recorded a high performance of a real GDP, which is actually standing at a double digit of 10.6% in 2018, quarter one, from 1.7% 1 registered in 2017, almost the same period that was quarter one. What actually did drive this double digit growth? As we said, yes, um, economic performance for the first half of this year is, is, is going to be much higher than the first half of last year. Mm -hmm. We haven't got the final numbers for Q2 2018, mm -hmm. uh, but we had the Q2 2018 from uh, the Institute of Statistics going at 10.6%. And as we said, when you look at what we compile as a central bank, mm -hmm. uh, frequent economic numbers, what we call composite of uh, composite uh, indicators of uh, frequent numbers, we see that growing at 15.7% compared to 7.4 we had in the first half of last year. Mm. So already the, what we can see uh, from the central bank point of view, we see this half growing well. This is linked to uh, two main areas. Uh, one was agriculture mm -hmm. uh, that performed well in season A, that's first quarter of this year. And this uh, spills over in, into Q2 of, uh, of the year. With good performance of agriculture, this also spills over into uh, services, uh, transport, and uh, so this is one driver. Then the other one is construction that has picked up again. Mm -hmm. First half of last year, construction grew by negative one, I think, uh, percent. Mm -hmm. And this, this year, with the Gesra Airport coming on board, with the different infrastructure projects going on, so construction has also picked up and that has pulled up the industry uh, sector mm -hmm. uh, and transport uh, mainly run they are contributing a lot to growth in transport uh, sector as well right so these are the main drivers of the uh, the current growth we see right uh, it's interesting also to say because when you talk of uh, the you know the construction uh, sector how much of that money that is actually coming in out of these projects is actually getting into our economy because there's been this fear that much as we're having these construction activities happening, but a lot of the products or the construction materials are coming from outside, hence increasing or reducing the pace of cutting our trade deficit. Yeah, th that's true. Uh, as, as a young economy that is uh, really uh, on this development path, you expect that if you are to invest in different sectors, the need for investments or the, the products used for investments, you won't be already in position to produce those uh, products locally. So that's why our import bill has been really high compared to our export bill. So imports grow faster because there's a lot you need, uh, as you construct, as you rightly say. Mm -hmm. but, but I think what the government has been doing uh, is try and, uh, one, of course, creating good environment for investments in these areas. Mm -hmm. Already we have, uh, cement was in fact the biggest consumer of uh, foreign exchange in terms of uh, uh, imports of these uh, construction materials. <coughs> with, the, with the completion of uh, Cimerua, uh, I think 2015, that's when they started uh, increasing their production. Mm -hmm. This has been cut to more than half uh, the, the, the amount we are spending on cement. Mm -hmm. Just the other day, we, we saw another cement plant coming up in, uh, in, uh, in Musanze. Uh, and so th there's uh, uh, work going on to look at other construction products that can uh, support these big 
driving construction across the country. Mm -hmm. So yes, th there is always a time lag mm -hmm. between when the economy is able to generate capacity to produce the needs they need in different areas right. and what we need to do the investment. And the country like us who is really uh, on speed uh, in terms of investment, yes, it's, it's going to hit us on the to hit you in that end, but the, side. the good news is that there is hope, as you say. Sure. Big time. You mentioned agriculture in your number one, in, in your list of the top, you know, sectors that have contributed to this growth. Mm. But sadly, on the flip side, this sector actually did mm. receive just about one percent of the total yeah. credit that was mm. actually being given out. Mm. And the question here is, you know, what sort of powers do you have in your hands as mm. the regulators of financial institutions to ensure that this very important sector actually mm -hmm. does receive the amount of support it needs as far as financing is concerned? I, I don't think that the, 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 the issues with the, with the regulator, in fact at the moment mm -hmm. when, when we are ours is beyond just being the regulator, we are, we are economic advisors to mm -hmm. the government and uh, so what we do, we, we we're using our site department, we produce papers uh, that influence, that guide policy decisions. And so we've engaged government along those lines. Uh, we're able to produce facts and uh, uh, areas concerning like why is agriculture not being financed mm -hmm. by the financial sector. Mm -hmm. The question is, the area is, the sector is too risky and the, of course, banks, as you imagine, mm -hmm trading in money uh, and capital, money fears risk more than anything else. So, so the, the challenge is not really about telling the banks you put more money in agriculture. Mm -hmm. The challenge is how can we as a country, and as I said during the discussions, the Minister of Finance, at least the best of my knowledge, the Minister of Finance, the Minister of uh, Agriculture, and the Minister of Commerce are working to de-risk the agriculture sector mm -hmm. and make it more favorable to attract uh, investment both from uh, through loans and other investments. Mm. So th the issue of not relying on weather, mm. I think that's a big challenge mm. that we've had. Uh, so irrigation is one of top uh, uh, actions the government is taking. Uh, uh, Post-harvest uh, management has been a big challenge. Mechanization. Uh, so these are areas that th the three ministries are working on. Mm. And with that streamlined, it's easier then to really have real commercial projects in the agricultural sector than can attract uh, financing from the financial sector.